Yes, I can feel it too. Such power. It must be a very important individual. I don't think it will take long before they emerge from the fog of fiction to me. They are almost here. I just cannot wait. Let's all keep our eyes on the trees. I loved it. 
and um, and just but like that's the thing. Like I've fallen in love with that job. As long as you have the passion for it, and you're doing it for yourself for the right reasons, and that's that's what I can say too. There's no exact science. Like if you ask any of the other actors here, we'd all have a different story as to how we got into acting. Um, so as long as you just kind of surround yourself in that creative industry and other people who want to make store like you know make films or tell stories, that's that's the kind of group you need to be around. Um, and just to have that inner passion and drive to do it. So um, if you've got the love for it, then stick with it. But it's probably also a good idea to have a plan B <laughs> because it's a very tough career and I'm very, very, very lucky to be where I am right now. But um, yeah, just fall in love with it and stay in love with it, I think is the most important thing. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. Hi. Hi. How are you? Uh, I'm shaking. It's okay. Just, just or we can just shake, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask you, uh, what was <laughs> What's your name? Naomi. Naomi? Yeah. Hi, I'm Bob. Just breathe, it's all good. Okay, so you just said um, about how different, how everybody gets into acting in a different way. Yeah. How did you get into acting? Uh, well, I did it at high school. I, like, um, I first I did my first play because uh, my sister told me I should do it, um, and so I did that. Um, and I, I was terrified of it. And um, funnily enough, so I did this play when I was thirteen, and then when I was about thirty-three, I was driving to work on the hundred one day, and I had this line back when I was thirteen, and it was still haunting me that I didn't do it right. And then when I was driving to work one day, I was like, oh, that's how I was supposed to do it, 20 years later. But anyway, um, all that aside, I did like drama at school, and I was with my mates, it was just a lot of fun. It was something that I, like, it was just fun for me. But I went to university to do geological engineering, and that was not fun. Um, so basically, well, I mean, I'm sure it's, I'm sure some people love it, but it wasn't fun for me. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of how I did it. And then I went, I just changed my university degree into creative arts. Started off writing and then, um, then started performing. And then that was where it kind of took off for me. Did a lot of, like, theatre. And then I uh, got a job on Home and Away. And that was kind of it from there on out. Yeah. Thank you so much. No worries, thank you. Bye. Did you like it? And is there anything you changed to it? And I have to say one more thing, my friend Jordy says hi. Oh, hi Jordy. <laughs> um, the ending of the show, uh, look for me, I really liked the ending of season five. I thought that was a really great ending to the show. And in a way, you know, they kind of said that, I think they said end of book one. To me, that kind of felt like a really nice ending. Um, and then, you know, we kind of started exploring different things in season six and seven. Um, so yeah, I, I actually haven't seen um, season six or seven, um, so I can't really talk too much about it. Um, but you know, I know that it was difficult, um, like to not have like, the ending seemed a bit bleak, like not being able to have kids and everything like that. But I think that's you know I'm not sure what the message is around that. But you know, for me personally, um, I needed to take time off work, so the story of Bellamy didn't really end way that I, you know, some people might have wanted it to, and I felt pretty bad about that. Um, but also I needed to run, I needed to put my mental health first, so it was a tough decision to walk away and take that time off, but um, yeah, I'm sorry, but uh, that's kind of, I had to put, I had to prioritise between one or the other, but um, you know, I'm very proud of being on the show for seven years, and yeah, I guess the end is up to interpretation for others, I don't know. Sorry. Hi. Hi. Um, thank you for being here. Oh, thanks um, for having me. My question was actually very similar about the ending uh, of Bellamy. So I don't really have another question. I just want to thank you to be so open on social media about mental health issues. Um, it's very inspirational, so just thank you. Oh, yeah, no worries. I mean, it, it's... Obviously, 
it's, it's something that I've, I've battled with for a lot of my life, and it's not. I don't know. I just feel like having, like being able to talk openly and honestly about it. it's really important. Um, I think I personally had run away from it for so many years, and um, you know, it, it, I had to stop and take it seriously. And, and it's an important thing that we all should be able to talk about. So um, I'm, I'm glad that it's helpful to a lot of people out there. It's just something that I felt like I needed to do. So appreciate that. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, Yesterday you mentioned that you were working on a few projects, including mm -hmm. ones with Eliza and Zach. Can you tell us anything more about those? Um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to, but you know, they're, they're, we're shooting them right now. I'm not sure what they want to do with their press release, but yes, I'm shooting them with Eliza at the moment, um, which is why she isn't here, but I managed to get some time off. And then I'll be shooting something with Zach later in the month. Um, but like the one with Eliza and I is more of a um, psychological thriller type thing with an AI, and the one with Zach is a western, so um, yeah, should be pretty cool. Yeah, Zach sent me some photos of him riding a horse from Montana. He looks very much at home. I'm terrified of horses, so we'll see how I go. Yeah, yeah. And I have a second question from my friend who wasn't able to be here. Okay. If you could say, if you could give yourself a different name and what would it be on? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm actually named after my father. So um, I am okay with that. Um, a lot of you might not know my father passed away when I was very young and gave me his name, so I wouldn't choose a different name. I am who I am. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, I'm actually really yesterday, um, but I wanted to say thank you. You made a little video for my mom and grandma, uh -huh. and she did love when I showed her. Oh, so she was sweet. so happy. So thank you for that. Yeah, no worries. Um, my question is, from all the seasons and all the different things you did during the seasons, what was your favorite to film? Mm, my favorite to film. I mean, I always liked doing action sequences. They were really cool. Um, I don't know what that was. That noise. Um, there was a cool fight sequence that I had with Marie. Um, that was fun. But um, it probably for me is back in season one and Bellamy doing all those speeches. I, I really liked doing that. Um, I came from a theatre background, so I felt very theatrical doing all that stuff. So yeah, and I think it was one of the only times where, like, whenever you have a rain machine on set, that's really cool. It makes every rain makes everything much more dramatic. So that's always cool. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I love your work. Um, and Thank my question you. is, um, do you ship Clark and Lexa? Do I ship Clark and Lexa? Yes. <laughs> I did when I did when it was like when they first came about. I thought it was fantastic. Um, but I also just ship like love, you know. Like I, I also that's one thing that I found tough about the show is that no one was allowed to grieve and then move on. Everyone was like, you know, like even Octavia never really got over Lincoln, and that is part of life. Like you, you do move on, you grieve, and you can move on. So. Um, that was one thing that I always felt was troubling with the show. It was that they didn't allow the characters to grow emotionally in that way. But yeah, I, there's like it was that Clark and Lexa was like one of the only, and Lincoln and Octavia were like one of the only real bright spots in the show where there was people like, were happy. You know, like um, Monty and Harper. I love them. You know, I guess I am a romantic at heart, and when people are in love and they're happy, it's nice to watch. Yeah. What's your favourite to work with on the stage? Yeah. Um, probably, uh, there's, <laughs> I mean, obviously, I mean, uh, Eliza is my favourite person to work with. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's not really a question, I'm just going to try and make a joke about it. But, um, no, no, Eliza was my favourite person to work with, so committed and such a generous actor. Um, yeah, quite phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Um, Hello. So my question is, can you still understand Drake like from this language while you speak it? Can I? Can I still understand it? I could never understand it. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer is no. I, I mean, it was, it's hard. It's hard to perform in a, a made-up language. But um, I think that everyone who did it was pretty amazing. Sometimes we would get those lines on the day of, and that was really difficult. So um, yeah. I didn't commit any of that to memory. And I think they knew that, and that's why Bellamy never spoke to <laughs> you. 
So sorry. Do you know Trig? A little bit. Oh my god. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you want to talk some Trig? And I can just nod like I know I, what you're saying. I say like, I like, um, I like to be after Skype to, um, a new statement. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, so I just wanted to say that, uh, I grew up with the Hungry. I started watching when I was 15 years old, I'm now 22, so it's basically my whole adult since crisis. Yeah, makes me feel old. The Hungry helped my parents because, well, I watched, well, I was watching it was during my whole crisis, like, oh, I'm so tired, I don't want to be like the video of the Hungry. So they were like, oh, God damn it. So they thank you for that. <laughs> it's um, my fault. <laughs> But I just want to say, uh, to ask, um, at, in which season do you think they actually, you know, went from being adolescents to real adults and actually, well, because you know they were talking to them, so yeah. they basically pushed them into the light, but where do you think they realized, okay, now we are adults and we have to do this shit? Well, so, I think that realization happened pretty early on, and I think it's also around the time we realized what kind of show we were making. So, Episode four, season one, where they um, hanged Murphy, where they were, like started having real consequences. That was when we kind of realised how dark and grim the show was going to be. Like I remember when we, and it's a pretty horrific scene. And so we're like, wow, okay, we're going pretty dark in this show. So for you know the, the kids on the ground, I think that's when they realised that they're playing adult games now. We there are consequences. And I think for when the adults came down, it wasn't until season two that they realised that their children had grown up. Um, so yeah, it happened early for the, the kids or the delinquents, but I think it took a little while for the adults to catch on that this has happened and they're no longer our kids anymore. But yeah. Thank you. No worries, thank you. I have a question. Okay. If you could kill one person on the show, who would you uh, uh, I don't know, you know, there's, nah, I mean, I, I, because I, I like, they're all my friends and it's weird, we need, we need to kill someone, so, um, the only reason I would kill Ali is because we'd have to shoot every scene twice, so we'd have to shoot it with her standing there and then without her there, so any day where Ali was on, it was like a really long day, and it's only because I wanted to get home early, that's the only reason I would have killed Ellie. Nothing against, you know, uh, Erica, that's for sure. Thank you very much. No worries, thank you. Bob, when was the last time you did something for the first time? When was the last time I did something for the first time? Wow, I don't know, it's been a weird... Oh, actually, you know what? Um... For our, uh, I did, I tried to do needlepoint uh, stitch work. Uh, you know, you do weird things during quarantine, during isolation. Um, but uh, yeah, our second year anniversary of, of, of marriage, it's a cotton wedding, and so I tried to stitch um, like a little thing for Eliza for our second year anniversary. And I, I don't know, I've got clumsy hands, so uh, that didn't really work out. But yeah. Here you go. Needle work. Thank you. I was wondering if season six Bellamy could give some advice to season one Bellamy, what would it be? Wow. Season six Bellamy was just like all over the place, wasn't it? It was chasing Clark a lot. Um I don't know, like it, I almost felt like Season one Bellamy had more clarity of who he was to season six Bellamy. Like, but I'd pro I would probably say, if you had the chance to talk to him, it'd be like, you know, start treating your sister as an equal. You know, like, really work on that relationship. I think that's one thing that really hurt Bellamy was not being able to communicate with his sister and losing her. So probably trying to be more, more, more a part of her life is probably something he regretted by season six that he didn't really recognize in season one. Yeah. Thank you. No worries, thank you. Hi. Hello. First of all, I love you. Oh, really great. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
my question is uh, why didn't uh, we get into a relationship with Clark? Because I, I was actually very really excited for that. Oh, look, that's a question I, I think you've got to ask the writers. I mean, it was something that was talked about, that's for sure. Um, but beyond that, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, we were definitely told to play that angle, so, um, you know, it was always an option, but, um, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. That's, that's, not, that's above my pay grade. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please say to her that I love her too? Okay, what's your name? Thank you, uh, Lee. Why not? 
question. Okay? Hi. Hello. So, my two favorite characters are Melanie and John Murphy. Oh. So, I was just wondering how it was to work with him. Yeah, yeah, Richard is an absolute joy to work with. We, uh, we absolutely loved it in the, like, season one, being the, you know, bad guys or, you know, whatever, the douchebags. Like, we embraced it and really encouraged it. When me and Richard would work together, we had, like, a really competitive but healthy competitive relationship. Like, we just wanted it to make it the best scene that it could be. Um, so, like, those memories that I made with Richard throughout the series, I, I will cherish, absolutely. So, yeah, I definitely had a, a romance with Richard, and I think that showed with Bellamy and Murphy a little bit. Maybe a little bit too much, but um, I loved it. I loved it completely. Thank you. That's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for more. Yeah, guys.